loving greetings and pranams in the joy and light of the risen Christ, in the joy and light of the beloved avatar, divine incarnation, Lord Jesus Christ, and in the joy and light of the universal Christ consciousness that was so perfectly manifest in Jesus and is latent within each one of us. Through your own self-realization, through your own awakening of divine consciousness, May that light, that joy, that power of infinite divine life pour over your own consciousness on this sacred day of Easter, the Resurrection Day. A blessed Easter to each one of you. Beloved friends around the world, we are here live at the uh, sacred chapel in the Mother Center, International Headquarters of Self-Realization Fellowship. This is not pre-recorded. We wanted to be here with all of you in real time and to invite each of you to feel that you're joining us here in this sacred chapel where our divine guru Paramahansa Yogananda led so many meditations and services over the decades and blessed not only by his samadhi, not only by his divine communion, but many times with the personal visitation of Jesus Christ. You know, when it became clear that we were not going to be able to hold the physical services at our temples and centers and meditation groups around the world. We decided to connect in this way online to bring us all together in this sacred day. But I thought to myself, you know, let's not make this a lecture. Let's not make this a day of discourse. Rather, let's use this as an opportunity for all of us to share, for all of us to experience the transmission of divine consciousness from Jesus Christ and the Masters. Feel that light, feel that transmission of divine consciousness from those great ones, from Jesus, from the Param Gurus, into the hearts and minds and homes of all who are tuning in with us for this special event. That's the most meaningful way to celebrate the day of resurrection of Lord Jesus. Now, as we begin with a prayer, close your eyes, visualize that great outpouring of divine light and blessings as we invoke the names of God, Jesus, Krishna, and the Param Gurus. Turn the attention within, open your heart. This is a very special day, a holy day, a day of high divine vibrations, which makes it very easy for us if we make the effort to tune in to feel that all-surrounding Divine Presence. So with a heart full of joyous expectation and devotion, let us pray from our hearts. Heavenly Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, blessed Lord Jesus Christ, 
Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Uteshwar, our own Guru Paramansa Yogananda, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. On this holy occasion of Easter, bless us that we may experience in our own consciousness the resurrection of Christ consciousness. The resurrection of divine joy, of immortality. Permeate our minds, our hearts, every cell of our being with that light, with that joy, with that divine consciousness. Om Peace Amen. It's such a joy to be here in this chapel at our international headquarters and to have all of you join us. And it's very special because today, April 12th, on this same day, April 12th in 1925, here at this exact location, our Guru Paramahansaji held the first Easter sunrise service here on the grounds of what was soon to become his international headquarters. Can I have you put a picture of that on the screen there? I want you all to see this. There's a, there gathered in front of this so wonderful beloved building, his students and followers from all over Los Angeles and California, April 12th, 1925. Now you have to visualize that all of those crowds of souls that are surrounding the Guru, today each one of you are taking their places. All right, you're going to join in there. You're with us here at the Mother Center now. And since we're online, we're also able to be joined by all the monks and nuns of all of Guruji's ashrams in America and in India and in Germany, all of those monks and nuns join me in wishing you a very blessed, a very joyous Easter. And, you know, we can think of this, we can experience this as a sunrise service, Easter sunrise service, even though all of you are in time zones all around the globe, isn't it? Because no matter where the sun happens to be in your particular time zone, it doesn't matter because our sunrise service, we're concentrating, we're experiencing, we're bathing our consciousness in that dawn of the spiritual sun, that great light of God in the Christ consciousness center at the point between the eyebrows that resurrecting light of Christ consciousness. And in that divine sunrise, let us feel ourselves resurrected in a new consciousness, a new spirit, a new faith, a new courage, a new strength, a new determination to live our lives in that divine light, in that divine joy. So to start this spiritual sunrise service, lift your gaze and attention to that point between the eyebrows. Peer into that infinite space and perceive and visualize that divine resurrecting light of Christ consciousness. 
Let our heart's devotional yearning and our concentration open a real portal into the land beyond all darkness, beyond all fear and limitations, into the heaven of light and joy and eternal life that is all around us, that is right within us, but that is hidden from the limited instruments of the restless body and mind. Relax the body, release all of its tensions and restlessness. Calm the mind and let that life, that light, that power, that divine joy flow into our souls, flow into our minds, into our thoughts, our feelings, and glowing, radiating into every cell, all the billions of cells throughout our body. Feel that resurrecting light from the divine sun in the spiritual eye. Now continuing to gaze into that point between the eyebrows, visualize a great radiant golden sun The light of that sun flows over the entire consciousness, over body, mind, and soul. Now, as you continue to gaze into it, visualize and perceive that radiant sun forming itself into a golden halo, a golden ring of vibrating divine light, divine life. Now in the enclosed in that vibrating golden ring, perceive a sphere, a pool of purest, deepest opalescent blue. And let your consciousness dive deep into that blue light, purifying, calming, expanding blue light. And then in that calmness, in that purity, visualize and experience at the very center of that sphere of blue, a silvery white five-pointed star. Shining with transcendental light. And feel, feel your thoughts, feel your consciousness being pulled magnetically by a great force of divine gravitation to be anchored on that silvery white star. For it is the basis of all that exists, that light of spirit. It is the security, the eternal security of all that exists. That ring of golden light, of course, as our guru has explained. That is the epitome in the human body of cosmic life, of that great vibration of Holy Ghost, the Om vibration that enlivens and sustains and underlies all creation. It's epitomized in the human body in that ring of golden light surrounding the spiritual eye. 
And that blue opalescent sphere, that is the epitome in the body of Christ consciousness, the Kutasta Chaitanya, the changeless, eternal divine intelligence that pervades and guides and harmonizes all creation. That too has an epitome in the human body, in the form, in the consciousness of each of us as that blue sphere in the spiritual eye. And that shiny silvery white star, that is the epitome in the body of eternal spirit, the transcendental spirit. Again, let the consciousness be bathed and awakened and recharged and resurrected in those radiations, those beams of spiritual light and joy and consciousness that we are visualizing in the spiritual eye. And now at this time, I request all of our SRF monks and nuns who are participating in this gathering, in all the ashrams here at Mount Washington, at Ranchi, at Encinitas, at Dakshineshwar on the banks of the Holy Ganges, at Lake Shrine, at Hollywood, at Noida and Dwarahat near Babaji's cave, at our Greenfield and Phoenix ashrams, our Hidden Valley and Nuremberg ashrams, all the monks and nuns I request now to concentrate deeply on radiating and broadcasting that healing, resurrecting light and blessings of God, Christ and Gurus to all who are joining us around the world. As you feel that outpouring of love and divine friendship from all of us, May the infinite life and light and joy of the risen Christ descend on each of you from the heavenly realms, filling you, washing you, transforming your hearts and your homes, and awakening your soul consciousness. May this cosmic universal light and joy Resurrect the individual sun of light and life in your brain and heart and abide there, shedding its radiance through all the cells of your body, saturating all your thoughts, all your feelings, and radiating out to your family your community, your country, and to the whole world, circling and bathing the entire planet. Now we'll have a brief period of chanting and meditation. Let us chant along with the powerful, divinely charged voice of our beloved Guru Paramahansa Yogananda. And then after we meditate, I will share a few thoughts and then we'll have 
a longer period of meditation in the second half of our service. So let us now hear and chant and feel the presence of that great divine guru as he leads us in the invocation, cloud-colored Christ come, cloud-colored Christ come. I am singing, cloud colored Christ comes. Christ is hidden behind the darkness of your mind, behind the clouds of restlessness. And when you peer into the darkness, you shall behold the light of Christ. Sing with me, especially during Christmas or any time you feel the call of Christ and want to call him in the temple of your heart. Jesus Christ, come. 
Dear ones, dear friends, I'm sure all of you feel as I do. Thank God that we have this opportunity to feel and receive and commune with that great peace, that great comforting presence of Jesus and the Masters and the Infinite Christ Consciousness on this day which comes just in the midst of, yes, a very challenging time around the world. But I think we all have experienced in one way or another that, yes, the times are challenging, but hard times open the heart if we allow it. When challenges, when difficulties, when threatening circumstances come, if we allow it, that stimulates in us the great ur greater urgency, the greater determination and motivation to connect our lives with God, to let it take us to God through meditation, through prayer, through practice of the presence of God. And we have to remember all of this difficulty, this coronavirus pandemic, however challenging or difficult it may be, it's just temporary. This will pass. Better times will come. And we'll see, we'll see that this temporary world crisis will bring tangible spiritual blessings over the whole world. I have felt this so strongly over the last few weeks, so strongly. And one thing that made me feel that way was all of the messages, all the letters and uh, words and emails from all of you, all of Paramahansa Yogananda's spiritual family around the world, writing in and saying, how deeply connected, how deeply grateful you feel for the wisdom, the understanding, the spiritual consciousness that has been given to us on this path in the techniques and teachings that our Guru and Param Gurus and Christ and Krishna have given to us. I feel that in that tremendous spiritual maturity in so many of you. And this is part of what convinces me among other things, that we will look back on this time. We'll look back on this time and we'll see it was one of the stepping stones of our world civilization out of the darkness of the lower Kali Yuga dark ages and into the higher age, the higher age of spiritual understanding, spiritual awakening, spiritual consciousness and unity. It will be one of the stepping stones. There will be others. There will be other stepping stones, already have been, and will be more. But we'll look back on this and say, this was a time when the world consciousness as a whole took a collective step forward in response to these challenges. It brings, uh, it brings us so much comfort, so much understanding and, and reassurance to remember the words that our Guru spoke right here in this chapel when he said, he urged each one of us, he said, go where the masters have gone, to the shelter of God, from where they are watching and helping the world. Doesn't that thought give us a very timely sense of reassurance just to know that these great ones, Christ and Krishna and the Param Gurus, are, as our Guru said, they are watching and helping the world. And as we all know, the darker the night, the more glorious the dawn. 
And so even in the midst of these difficult times, we can infuse our minds and our hearts and souls with the realization that this too will pass away and that there is an eternal consciousness, an eternal life and goodness and light that remains ever undiminished, untouched, unaffected by the mortal troubles and difficulties that the world may be passing through. You know, on this special day of celebration of the resurrection of Jesus and considering the times the world is going through, I think these words that he spoke are particularly meaningful when he said this. He said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, because it was founded upon a rock. We find in the sacred Bhagavad Gita very similar imagery expressed by the Lord Krishna. He said, that yogi who possesses the inner bliss, who rests on the inner foundation, who is one with the inner light, becomes one with spirit. So that's what I want all of us to experience today, to feel, to feel that foundedness, that foundation of our lives upon the rock of eternal spiritual consciousness upon that foundation, that inner foundation of the divine presence. And how to do it? As Jesus so beautifully says, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. That's the wise individual who is founding his life, founding his consciousness and feelings and thoughts upon that rock of spiritual consciousness. Now, this is so, again, so timely and so poignant when I think about it, because when he says, who do, those who do these sayings of mine, those who hear and practice these sayings of mine, well, where do we get that wisdom? Where do we get that instruction? Where do we get that ability to follow the path set forth by the great ones, by Christ, by Krishna, by all the prophets and and saints and sages down through the ages. I want to draw your attention. Many of you have seen already, but just a few days ago, we posted on our SRF website a digital version of the spring issue of Self-Realization magazine. And I want you all to be aware of that because of this very point, this quote, this passage, this scriptural truth that Jesus is conveying to us. And in that, in that magazine, you'll find an article by our guru, by Paramahansa Yogananda, about original Christianity and original yoga. And here's what he says. As a follower of Self-Realization Fellowship teachings, you'll go to Satsanga Society teachings, you are studying original Christianity and original yoga, the scientific method of uniting the soul with spirit as practiced in India for millennia. And then he went on and said, Self-Realization Fellowship, and you'll go to Satsanga Society of India, has brought to you the esoteric truths that Christ taught to his disciples. In these weekly lessons, immortal truths will be found. That Christianity which Christ taught to his disciples and which the disciples were not able to give to the world is being revived through this work of self-realization. Powerful words, powerful impetus and motivation for us to, to again, as I've been saying in my meetings and messages to you over these, um, these weeks and months just gone by, powerful motivation for us to appreciate and to dive deeper into the sacred teachings, into the sacred techniques and principles that we have been blessed with. You know, 
as with so much else that our guru teaches, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's not a dogma, it's not a philosophical teaching or a belief, it's an experience. It has to be felt as a reality in the consciousness of each one of us. And yes, that physical resurrection that Jesus demonstrated, his body was dead. And that miracle of reviving the body, of rising again from the tomb, this is, a, this is a reality. And yet, it's not the most important of those lessons. It's stunning, it's miraculous, it's inspiring, it gives us hope that there is no death, that there is no finality to our mortal experiences. But even that was only the beginning of what Jesus wanted us to understand and wanted us to experience and realize about resurrection. And that is this, that he was only able to perform that miracle of resurrecting the physical body after death because he had already resurrected his consciousness, resurrected his soul from mortal limitations into that infinite, all-pervading, eternal God consciousness. And that's what he is inviting. That's what he is urging every single human being to work for and to accomplish in their own lives. And as Christ urges that, so these teachings that Paramahansa Yogananda was ordained to bring to the world give us the methods. They give us the techniques. So again, today I, I didn't want to have a discourse. I didn't want to have a teaching, partly because Remember, all the teaching, all the um, understanding and wisdom that we need to accomplish that resurrection in our own consciousness, all of that has been given to us with great thoroughness, with great clarity in the SRF and YSS lessons, in the books by our guru, and especially in those powerful and ancient yoga meditation techniques of the Kriya Yoga science. So rather than just discourse about all of that today, I wanted this, as I said, this gathering to be an experiential sharing of that expanded consciousness, Christ consciousness, Krishna consciousness, the resurrected consciousness of the divine in each one of us. Look at the altar. Look at these divine ones who guide this path. All of those masters are resurrected in the identical consciousness and divine freedom as the resurrected Jesus. And not only that, they're inviting us, they're urging each one of us to join them in that heavenly consciousness now. Now, today. Remember, as our Guru said over and over again, the life and the teachings of Jesus are universal. They are not meant for just a particular denomination of religion, a particular sect. They are universal for the entire human family, just as the science of yoga is universal. And our Guru spoke again and again of how important it is for us to differentiate between Jesus the man whose life was such an inspiration down these many centuries to differentiate between Jesus the man and the infinite Christ consciousness that incarnated and expressed through him. That Christ consciousness, that's the promise. That's the goal for each one of us that each of us can attain. I think of all of the sayings and teachings from the New Testament, from the Gospels, the teachings of Jesus, of all of the sayings, probably the one that Paramahansa Yogananda quoted and referred to more than all, practically any other saying, any other teaching, was this one from the Gospel of St. John, where he says, as many as received him, to, give, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And our Guru 
so beautifully. Let me, let me share these powerful words from him. Speaking to each one of us about this, about the truth and about the mission, about the great blessing that he brought for all humanity. He said, my duty is to urge you to seek him for yourself, to seek God for yourself, so that you all become like Christ. For that is the true nature of your soul. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Receive that infinite consciousness. If you utilize your vast mind power in meditation, the light of God will shine through you. And our Guru went on to say, these great teachings are enumerated in the weekly lessons and are sent out all over the world. Our primary purpose is to give divine communion to everyone and to remind them that God is the source of all power. You don't need to seek anything else because when you find him, you find everything else. We teach the techniques by which you can seek the giver of all gifts. It is so simple. It is something that can be done by all. It is within the reach of all who will make the effort. And then the master says, when I see people who are taking a real interest in finding God, that is the greatest joy. And as long as I shall speak, I shall say, seek God within yourself. That is what India taught me. That is why the masters and Christ sent me here. That you may establish in your own consciousness a temple of Christ consciousness, Krishna consciousness, the unchangeable Kutasta consciousness. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but nothing shall destroy these imperishable temples in this life or beyond. Again, that is the security, that is the rock, the imperishable foundation of divine assurance that these difficulties and challenges the world is passing through are very effectively and very forcefully reminding us about, as he said, that we establish in our consciousness a temple of Christ consciousness, a temple of Krishna consciousness, of the unchangeable Kutasta consciousness, and then knowing that whether heaven and earth pass away, nothing will destroy those imperishable temples in this life or the beyond. Guruji went on to say, I used to give healings, but I found that after receiving healing of the body, people went away and forgot about God. But as soon as you heal your soul, and you will have everything, so start now, start now. If you study the teachings even theoretically, you will know all there is to know about religion. And if you practice them, you will come to know God even as Christ knew him. I can't think of any greater inspiration, greater motivation for us to call to mind on this holy day of Easter, this holy day of resurrection, than number one, to come together as we're doing here in this gathering, to feel together, to experience together the reality of that resurrecting divine consciousness, and to let us motivate a deeper, more sincere, more constant diving deep into those teachings and techniques 
that is the teaching of Jesus, that is the teaching of Krishna in the Gita, and that has been delivered into the eager hands of each one of us on this path. You know, in these times that our uh, local authorities and government authorities have uh, urged us and enforced on us, really, this period of social distancing, this is an excellent time to reduce our spiritual distancing. Use that time, use this period to draw closer to God, to reduce that spiritual distance that we have created through our busyness, through our concentration and absorption and obsessing constantly about all of the million and one um, distractions and temptations and, and uh, uh, offerings of the world. We can practice social distancing to reduce our spiritual distancing. And that's an excellent, this is an excellent time to go deeper in practice of meditation, deeper in the practice and your study of the teachings of the lessons. For example, just to personal, uh, personal experience, I, these last few days I have been rereading in our Guru's commentary on the Gospels, The Second Coming of Christ, those chapters about the last days of Jesus' life. There's so much there. It's just so profound, so uplifting. And especially I love the, those chapters where Gurji is, is uh, giving and commenting on that wonderful last discourse that Jesus gave to his disciples at the Last Supper. Tremendous. A tremendous preparation of the consciousness for understanding and experiencing the real Easter, the real resurrection. In one of those, Jesus says these words, close your eyes and just hear these with their, the same undiminished power as when he spoke them to his disciples, that they echo down the ages. And he says to all of us, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. And this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. What a beautiful and powerful spiritual prescription for exactly what our world so much needs. A rebirth, a resurrection of that Christ love that we first feel in our own individual relationship with God in meditation and then are able to express outwardly. To love one another, as he said, as I have loved you. And I was so happy also to see that in our online meditation center, in the weekly uh, group study, the devotees come together from all parts of the world and join in uh, in the online meditation center, that uh, the one that was on Good Friday a couple of days ago, it very much it concentrated, it dwelt on that uh, teaching of Jesus during his crucifixion, where he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Our Guru's, again, our beautiful commentary on that passage, on the whole story of Jesus' life, is so transformative. It's so profound, if studied with the reverent attention, with the concentration, with the receptivity, as is done in those online study sessions. Nothing could make me happier other than the meditations themselves. To see devotees around the world tuning into and receiving and absorbing the power of those spiritual truths in an experiential way, just as many of you do at home on your own, just as we monastics do in the ashrams.
So again, I'm so happy that so many thousands around the world have been joining in those group meditations during this, particularly during this time when it's not possible, when we have these stay at home orders and it's not possible to go to our temple meditation center or ashram to have group meditation still. It's just, I can't tell you how thrilling it has been to see the number, thousands, thousands in countries all around the world coming together to tap into that power of meditation, that power of divine communion through that online resource. Our YSS monks led a beautiful meditation just Sunday morning, their India time, that was Saturday night in California time, which I know many of you benefited from. In the days ahead, we will be uh, adding more monastics to, to lead these, these daily meditations in the different time zones and in the different languages. And I know these monastics are joyously looking forward to being with you in that way. So now, before we have a period of meditation, I want to just leave you with this blessing, this benediction from our divine Guru. Close your eyes and let these words sink deep within your consciousness. Because this is the message of the universal Christ, the message of original Christianity and the message of original yoga. That Guru Dev Paramahansa Yogananda is blessing and surcharging and transmitting into the hearts and consciousness of each one of you who attempts to tune in. He said, you are all gods if you only knew it. Behind the wave of your consciousness is the sea of God's presence. You must look within. Don't concentrate on the little wave of the body with its weaknesses. Look beneath. Close your eyes and you see the vast omnipresence before you, everywhere you look. Now do this and visualize along with Guruji's words. Close your eyes and you see that vast omnipresence before you, everywhere you look. You are in the center of that sphere and as you lift your consciousness from the body and its experiences, you will find that sphere filled with a great joy and bliss that lights the stars and gives power to the winds and storms. God is the source of all our joys and all the manifestations in nature. May the Lord bless you, Guruji said, and I pray that you have the one desire to find him. Worship the living God of bliss, not the God of punishment and revenge. Worship the God who is templed in the flowers, heaving in the ocean, and who blesses and caresses you in the wind and in the sunshine. God will never forsake you. It is you who are running away from him. Find him within, and you will behold this world as a dream. Many times I see it that way. Rouse yourself. Forget this dreamed illusion, for the world offers nothing but sickness and suffering, false security and happiness that is short-lasting. Break your limitations. Be ever awake in Him. Now let's med meditate together for 25 or 30 minutes. We'll begin by chanting together with our, with our monks and Hollywood members. From this sleep, Lord, and make this a prayer for resurrection, a prayer from your heart. From this sleep, Lord, will you wake me? Wake me from that dream of delusion, that dark nightmare of earthly consciousness that Gurji was telling us about in the words I just read. From this sleep, Lord, Will you wake me from this dream, Lord? Will you wake me? In thee I dive, and in thee I rise. In thy sea, in that all-pervading sea of light and joy and eternal life. 
In thee I dive, in thee I rise, in thy sea, in thee. And in thee I am born, and in thee I will die, to live forever in thee. Let us feel that resurrection of consciousness as we dive deep within. So let's chant now, and then we'll have a period of silent meditation after which we'll have a, pre a healing prayer service. From this deep Lord, will you wake? This dream, Lord, will you wake, wake me? In thee I dive, in thee I rise, in thee I dive, in thee I rise, in thy sea. In, in thee, in thy seed, 
And now, dear brothers and sisters around the world, let us channel that peace, that divine presence that we have felt, that we have cultivated as a worldwide Sangam during these moments of meditation together. Let us pull that together, focus it and channel it as we send out healing vibrations all around the world to all of God's children, banishing darkness, banishing fear, banishing sickness and limitation and lack of understanding and bathing the whole planet, all beings in that resurrecting light of Christ, of God. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their bodies. Now rub the hands together. Feel the divine energy flowing into the body, collecting in the hands. A great light, a great power. Om. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent, Thou art in all Thy children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their minds. Now rotating the hands around each other, creating a great force field of light, a great force field of healing Om vibration. And send it out to all. Om. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent, thou art in all thy children. Manifest thy healing presence in their souls. Lift it up. Feel that divine peace, that divine joy, that divine light of healing, of harmony, of understanding, of divine consciousness <clears throat> flowing out over all the world, bathing and changing and transforming this moment in time. Oh. Let's have our closing prayer. Heavenly Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Blessed and Beloved Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Sri Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, our Guru Paramansa Yogananda, saints of all religions, we bow to you all.
Beloved Jesus Christ, we thank you for the inspiration and example of your divine life. May we learn from your example how to love, how to love deeply and unconditionally, how to forgive, how to understand, and how to anchor our lives on the rock of eternal, unshakable, invincible spiritual consciousness of our souls. On this day where we celebrate your resurrection, bless us, O oh, beloved God and Christ, that we may be resurrected into a new era of our spiritual lives. A new expansion of love, of light, of joy in our hearts, in our minds, in all of our actions, in all of our relationships, in every moment of our existence. Beloved God, great gurus, bless us, be with us, guide us, shepherd us always into the divine consciousness where you are waiting for us from where you are watching and helping us every step of the journey. We bow to you all. Om Shanti 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 Amen. And beloved ones, please let me in closing just use this opportunity to convey to you my, my heart's thanks and gratitude for the sweet and touching and wonderful messages, greetings, cards, emails, Easter greetings that have come from so many of you around the world to those of us here in the ashram, monks and nuns, and to me. Thank you. You don't know how much we admire you and cherish that contact and that fellowship and that divine bond of mutual striving. to live a better life and to radiate that light of God, Christ, and gurus. So thank you, each one. And let me add another word of thanks. I said a few moments ago, a few minutes ago, that how much our monks and nuns are enjoying and looking forward to uh, helping to conduct the meditations in our online meditation center. And this is true, but I also want to add that we don't have enough monks and nuns to lead enough to cover the entire 24-hour period. And that online meditation center, there's no way that it could be doing the great spiritual service that it's performing without these wonderful, tireless, and dedicated lay members of Paramahansa Yogananda's organization who coordinate and organize and support and lead many of the meditations and make it, make it all possible. 
And uh, in these messages that so many of you have sent, Easter greetings that you've sent over the last week, almost without fail, there's expressions of thanks to those who are, those lay members who are um, running and making possible that online meditation center. What divine timing it was that, uh, what a sign that God and Guru knew that we would be going through this period when this would become literally a spiritual lifeline. And so that it was organized and put in place seemingly just in time, in God's time, to help us and support us and carry us through as a united spiritual family these challenging times. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all who are making that possible and to all who are participating in the meditations and in the group study. Blessed Easter, joyous Easter, God, Christ, and Gurus bless each one of you until we meet again.